The British Grand Prix, a cornerstone event in the Formula One calendar, returned to the historic Silverstone circuit, nestled within the grounds of an erstwhile Second World War airbase. Having inaugurated the World Championship racing season in 1950, Silverstone was now slated as the venue for the fifth Grand Prix of the 1951 season. This revered circuit, renowned for its sprawling layout and high-speed corners, posed a formidable challenge to drivers and machines alike. However, unlike the preceding rounds at Spa, Francorchamps and Rems, Silverstone's layout promised to be slightly less taxing on the engines, as teams prepared to unleash their racing prowess on the legendary track, anticipation mounted, hinting at a fiercely contested battle for victory and a possible breakthrough moment for the Scuderia Ferrari, eager to secure their maiden triumph of the season. In response to the shifting dynamics of the championship, Alfa Romeo made a strategic move by expanding their lineup for the British Grand Prix. Alongside the established trio of Farina, Fangio and Sanesi, plans were in place to introduce a fourth car for Luigi Fagioli. However, following the controversial car swap at Reims, Luigi Fagioli opted to part ways with the team. In his stead, Felice Bonetto was enlisted to fill the void. With this addition, Alfa Romeo bolstered their presence on the grid, now fielding four cars consistently. Scuderia Ferrari was inching closer to rivaling Alfa Romeo. Their performance at Rams showcased their potential for victory. Despite their competitive edge, reliability issues with the 375 chassis had thwarted Ascari's chances of securing their maiden Grand Prix win. With Tarufi still sidelined due to illness, Jose Froilan Gonzalez, now a permanent fixture in the team, stepped up to fill the vacancy. The seasoned drivers, Ascari and Villoresi, remained at the helm, determined to challenge Alfa Romeo's dominance. The British BRM team made a pivotal decision to unveil their P15 car for its maiden appearance at a Grand Prix event. While the car had previously participated in non-championship races, its performance had been marred by unreliability, failing to challenge the dominance of Alfa Romeo and Ferrari as anticipated. The P15 boasted a remarkable 1.5-litre 16-cylinder compressor engine, a revolutionary feat in Formula One engineering that rivaled the power of its Italian counterparts. The British Grand Prix delivered a shockwave right from the qualifying session, marking a historic moment as Scuderia Ferrari conceded pole position for the first time in Formula One history. The unexpected usurper of this coveted spot was none other than Ferrari's rookie sensation, Gonzalez. Despite only his second outing for the Maranello-based team, the Argentine driver showcased remarkable prowess, clocking a blistering lap time of 143.4. This stellar performance not only secured pole position, but also shattered the previous year's record by a staggering margin of over seven seconds. As the qualifying dust settled at the British Grand Prix, the seasoned duo of Fanjo and Farina found themselves trailing the astonishing pace set by Gonzalez. The Ferraris of Ascari and Villoresi followed, showcasing the diminishing gap between the Italian powerhouses. Sanisi secured the sixth spot albeit trailing the pole position time by almost seven seconds. Alfa Romeo's new recruit, Bonetto, made a commendable debut in seventh place, with Peter Whitehead piloting a private Ferrari to an impressive eighth position. Disappointment loomed for local fans, as the BRM team, amidst much anticipation, made a last-minute decision to join the Grand Prix fray. This 11th hour entry meant that the team's drivers missed out on qualifying altogether, relegating them to start from the rear of the grid. The drivers have to compete 90 laps. The complete race length is 408 kilometers. The British Grand Prix at Silverstone kicked off with a stunning twist as Felicia Bonetto, in his debut race for Alfa Romeo, starting from seventh on the grid, executed a spectacular start, catapulting himself into the lead as the cars stormed into the first corner. 
Right on his tail was the pole-sitting Ferrari of José Froilán González, who had displayed impressive speed in qualifying. The BRM team made a promising start to their home Grand Prix at Silverstone, with both cars driven by Reg Parnell and Peter Walker rapidly making progress through the field. As the race got underway, Parnell and Walker wasted no time in overtaking the slower cars at the back of the grid, demonstrating the competitive potential of their cars. Bonetto's brief stint at the front was short-lived as Gonzalez swiftly seized the lead on the second lap of the race. Demonstrating his prowess behind the wheel, Gonzalez wasted no time in asserting his dominance, eager to maintain the advantage secured by his pole position start. After a somewhat rocky start, Juan Manuel Fangio showcased his mastery of the Silverstone circuit with a phenomenal lap that saw him execute a series of breathtaking overtakes. With remarkable precision and determination, Fangio swiftly dispatched Villoresi, Farina, Ascari and Bonetto, all in the span of a single lap, catapulting himself into second place behind race leader Gonzalez. Despite his promising start, Bonetto found himself quickly overtaken by the relentless charge of Farina, Ascari and Villoresi. The Italian newcomer, who had initially shown great potential, ultimately relinquished all the hard-fought positions he had gained at the beginning of the race. As the more seasoned competitors surged ahead, Bonetto faced the sobering reality of the fierce competition at the pinnacle of motorsport. Fangio, renowned for his tenacity and skill behind the wheel, launched yet another impressive assault on the track, swiftly wresting the lead from his compatriot and friend Gonzalez on lap 10. However, Gonzalez refused to yield, keeping pace with Fangio's Alfa Romeo in his Ferrari, proving himself a formidable challenger to the seasoned veteran. The battle at the front intensified as the two Argentine drivers engaged in a thrilling duel, thrilling spectators with their skill and determination. The race order after 10 laps is Fangio, Gonzalez, Ascari, Farina, Bonetto, Villoresi, and Senesi. As the race progressed, the fight for fifth position between Bonetto and Villoresi escalated. On lap 15, Villoresi attempted to overtake Bonetto at Cop's corner, but lost control, resulting in a spin. This mishap allowed the remaining Alfa Romeo driver, Sanesi, to capitalize and seize sixth place, while Villoresi struggled to rejoin the race. As the race unfolded, a fierce duel ensued for third place between Farina and Ascari, with both drivers pushing their cars to the limit. The Alfa Romeo drivers found themselves unexpectedly outpaced by the Ferraris, marking a significant shift in performance dynamics for the 1951 season. Ascari, demonstrating remarkable speed, set the fastest lap of the race in his relentless pursuit of Farina. Despite Ascari's determined efforts, Farina displayed exceptional defensive skills, refusing to yield to his rival's advances. The intense battle between these seasoned competitors added an electrifying element to the British Grand Prix. Amidst the intense on-track action, the British Grand Prix witnessed its fair share of early retirements. Unfortunately, the talented driver Louis Sheeran was forced to bow out of the race due to brake failure. The Alfa Romeo team faced a crucial moment as they were forced to make pit stops for refueling. During Juan Manuel Fangio's stop, José Froilán González found himself in a commanding position, holding a significant lead over Fangio, who had to play catch-up after the pit stop. As the race progressed, the Ferrari team prepared for their scheduled pit stops, which were expected to occur approximately 10 laps after the Alfa Romeos. Alberto Ascari, was the first Ferrari driver to come into the pits for his scheduled stop. However, disaster struck for Ascari as he encountered gearbox issues during the pit stop, resulting in a major setback for the Ferrari team. The race order after 60 laps is Gonzalez, Fangio, Farina, 
Villaresi, Bonetto, Parnell, and Sanesi. Jose Froilan Gonzalez, enjoying a comfortable lead of over a minute over Fanjo, decided to pull into the pits for refueling. During this pit stop, a remarkable display of sportsmanship unfolded. In an unexpected gesture, Gonzalez generously offered his seat to the sidelined Ascari, who was dealing with gearbox issues. However, Ascari, acknowledging the spirit of competition, declined the offer, gesturing for Gonzalez to continue his pursuit of victory. Farina's hopes of clinching a podium finish were dashed when he was forced to retire from the race due to a clutch failure. This unfortunate mechanical issue caused him to lose his hard-fought third-place position. Jose Froilan Gonzalez makes history at Silverstone, crossing the finish line first and securing Ferrari's maiden Formula One victory. This triumph breaks Alfa Romeo's winning streak, marking a significant moment in the championship. Despite finishing second, Juan Manuel Fangio isn't disheartened. He celebrates the success of his friend Gonzalez and acknowledges that this result solidifies his leadership in the championship. Luigi Villaresi secures his spot on the podium once again, benefiting from the retirements of his rivals and claiming third place in the championship standings. Felice Bonetto impresses by finishing fourth, earning points for the second time in his career. Reg Parnell delights the local crowd by finishing fifth, securing valuable points for BRM in their debut race. Finally, Giuseppe Farina earns the last point for the fastest lap. Enzo Ferrari, the mastermind behind the success of Alfa Romeo, couldn't contain his emotions after his team's first victory. He famously said, There were tears in my eyes. On the one hand, I was happy, but on the other, there was a feeling that I had killed my own mother. This poignant expression captures the bittersweet nature of victory, highlighting Ferrari's deep respect for the legacy of Alfa Romeo, the team he had once been an integral part of. After the British Grand Prix, Juan Manuel Fangio solidified his lead in the 1951 Drivers' Championship with 21 points, while Giuseppe Farina follows closely behind with 15 points. Luigi Villoresi secures the third spot with 12 points, while Jose Froilan Gonzalez claims fourth place with 11 points. Lee Wallard, the winner of the Indy 500, rounds out the top five with nine points. As we gear up for the next chapter in this gripping saga, we invite you to stay tuned for the 1951 German Grand Prix. Prepare for more heart-stopping moments, fierce competition, and unforgettable racing moments at the iconic and unforgiving Nürburgring circuit. To all our loyal subscribers, thank you for your massive support. With each race, we strive to captivate and entertain, and it's your continued presence that motivates us to raise the bar even higher. So, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you for being part of this incredible journey. For those just tuning in, a huge welcome to our channel. Prepare to be immersed in the captivating stories and legendary races of Formula One's golden era. So, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay updated on all the thrilling races to come. Fellow enthusiasts, see you at the next race.